friends, today I'm gonna review The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. I received an arc of this through NetGalley in exchange for an honest review and this book is released on April 2nd. The Princess and the Fangirl is a companion sequel to Geekarella by Ashley Poston which came out in 2017 and I have a video review for Geekarella up in case you're interested in that as well. You technically do not have to read Geekarella before you read The Princess and the Fangirl but in my personal opinion I'd highly highly recommend it. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later on as well but I think that you're really gonna benefit from having read Geekarella before you read this. So Geekarella Cinderella was obviously a Cinderella retelling and The Princess and the Ferngirl is a The Princess and the Pauper retelling. So it has two POVs and we follow them both during four days at Excelsicon, which is this big convention and it's all about fandoms and everything, but it is kind of initially was made for this science fiction show called Starfield. Now this is already where I think that you'll really benefit from having read Geekarella because it does kind of make you already understand Starfield as a show. But yeah, one of the POVs is just a fan of the show who has been going to this con for years and years and years and she has a booth there with someone for the first time as well. And then the other POV is the main actress of Starfield. And then obviously we have the whole situation where both of them kind of switch positions. That's that's the princess and the popper part coming in and just how both of them kind of deal with that. Now, I want to start this review by saying that I love this book so very much and I'm going to give you things that I loved and things that I appreciated and things that you might not love but that I didn't really care about but I just really really want to start this review just letting out a little gush about how much I love this because I loved it quite a lot <laughs> and I just feel like I need to let it out right now so that I can be a little bit more precise and not all over the place with the rest of this review but this just really is a fantastic book and I already love Geekarella and I think that you could tell so very clearly that fandom and just being like nerdy and geeky is something that's very close to Ashley Poston I think you could tell how much of her heart she poured into it and reading this one I just got the exact same feelings and especially having already really enjoyed Geekarella and already being kind of really into this con and this science fiction tv show I really felt like I was coming back to this con and then I was experiencing all of this I just really really was invested in it in a lot of ways like both as someone who loved Geekarella, as someone who really enjoyed this storyline, who really loved these characters, but also as someone who loves this con and who loves this fictional science fiction show. So I just had an incredibly good time. I was very emotional throughout it. It just really filled a void in my soul that I didn't even know existed. Like sometimes you just read a book and you don't even know what just happened to you but you just know that you love this book and that it now owns a piece of your heart and that is what happened to me with the princess and the fangirl okay now that that is out of the way let's get into some more specifics i want to talk about representation first so one of the main characters jess has a female female romance and her love interest is black and then the other main character imogen her love interest is a japanese american guy and imogen also has two moms and her brother is in a relationship with another guy so there's definitely some good representation going on there. I really love both of the perspectives that we got in this story and I think that it was just incredibly smart to write a story like that. So Jess is the actress who plays a princess and then <laughs> Imogen is the fangirl, that's where the title comes from and what was really fun about them switching positions is that both of them had more appreciation for the other's position. So Jess is very much someone who is not very happy with the position she's in. So you basically only took this job in this science fiction show because 
people were telling her this is gonna be your breakout role you know like Jennifer Lawrence with the Hunger Games but that doesn't really seem to happen to her and so she's just not really happy with this she's not really happy with being part of this show because she's not really a fan of this show or just this whole universe around it and then she also experiences a lot of harassment and I thought that it was really really great that Ashley Poston included this part about social media harassment I just think that there were a lot of interesting things brought up about this issue and I just love that Ashley Poston brought up this very timely topic. This is also kind of what Imogen experiences a little bit. She's very happy when she switches positions. Like, she just really loves this. She loves being this actress. She loves the way she is treated by other people. But then when she kind of realizes all the harassment that Jess experiences on social media, she kind of understands how hard this situation really is for her. And then on the other hand, we have Jess, who really wasn't appreciating this science fiction show, who doesn't really care about fandom and doesn't really understand it. And her being in Imogen's situation, where she's really experiencing this con as a fan for the first time, and being with other nerds and geeks this is where she really realizes how impactful all of this is and just how important this is to so many people's lives and what it means to people and it just was so beautiful to see both of these girls kind of understanding the other person's perspective and kind of coming to terms with some things and just really developing so well as characters because of the situation I just thought that it was brilliantly done and I just really loved both of these perspectives and this switch because for both of them there were good things and bad things that they experienced. They understood each other better, they understood just the world better almost and I just really really love that. It's actually really funny how Jess kind of brings up that there are stories that have a lot of value as stories that are like really pretty to read, that have like really great writing and that are like classics, you know, it, be it books or movies or shows or whatever. And then there's just these stories about hobbits and wizards that just make you feel things and that make you feel home, that make you feel like you belong. And this was a pretty strong theme in this book, especially in Jess's storyline. And it was so interesting reading this because that's exactly what I felt about this book. Like obviously this doesn't have like this super pretty writing style and it's like the best literary thing I've ever read. It's not, but that's also not what I was expecting. What I wanted from this is to just really dive into this world and to feel like I belong and that's totally what happened for me. So it was this kind of interesting layer where this book talked about something that I personally felt with it as well. Does that make sense? Just some books just they make you feel home and they make you feel good and some movies and some shows and I don't know it just really was cool that this was such a theme in this book and that's also what I felt about this book. Now Let's talk about the romantic storyline. I am gonna say quite honestly, I loved both romantic storylines, but I am gonna point out some things to you that you might not love or that you should just be ready for. So first of all, obviously this takes place over four days at a convention. And so I know a lot of people are gonna yell insta-love, which to me personally is kind of ridiculous because this is not, first of all, this is nobody ever talks about like, oh my god, I love you forever, like, let's get married. On the contrary, I know there's this quote where one of the characters says, like, sometimes people come into your life and it might just be for a very short span of time, but they will really influence your life, even if it's just for a short amount. And so I actually really like that. And then also, if you've ever been to a con, you will understand that cons are magical places where everything can happen. And so two characters kind of falling for each other didn't even seem that unbelievable to me in this context. I think that it made a lot of sense, but I do know that some people will be put off by this or that some people at least need to go into it being kind of prepared. I think that what's most important about a good romance is that it's well written. I just really enjoyed the way it was written and I did think that 
everything was very believable. At the end of the day, you also always have to remember this is a fairy tale retelling, you know? And then another thing that I think some people might struggle with is that the female female romance is kind of built up where Jess is obviously not herself she is kind of posing as Imogen and the character that Jess has a romance with is a character that already knew Imogen online and so it is this kind of complicated situation where it's like well technically she's lying to her love interest but at the same time it's also made very clear that her love interest is realizing pretty quickly that something's up. Ashley Poston handled it very smart, like she was very smart about it, but I just know that this is another thing that might put some people off and so I just really kind of wanted to mention it that it happens in this context. I didn't mind both of these things. I just didn't mind at all because as I said I think that both romances were well written and beautiful. Honestly the female female romance and the way it played out was absolutely beautiful. I just really fell in love with them as well and so that's like something that I need. I just need to like not care. <laughs> if you can make me not care about the flaws, then that's for me really good. That makes a good book. So yeah, I think this review is already pretty long as it is. So I'm gonna end it here. I think I made my point very clear. I think I made very clear that I just absolutely love this book because it just spoke to my heart and soul. And that is what I want from a really good book. It is one of my favorite books of the year. I know it's gonna stay on the list even after everything else I'm gonna read this year because it just spoke to me on a different level. And I really just appreciate this novel. I really appreciate appreciate Ashley Poston and I appreciate this whole universe that she has created. I really am super immersed in this world and I think that Ashley Poston just did a fantastic job with all of this and I'm just in love. I would highly highly recommend both Geekerella and The Princess and the Fangirl. As I said I definitely think that you should read Geekerella first and I don't really see a reason for you to only pick up The Princess and the Fangirl. I just think that you're gonna have a much bigger enjoyment with The Princess and the Fangirl if you have read Geekerella beforehand because you're just gonna get a better feeling for this universe that Ashley Poston has already created and there's so many little like cameos and just like references to Geekerella that for me as someone who read and loved Geekerella were amazing and made this an even better experience than it already was and I would just hate for you to miss out on those. Technically it even has some spoilers for Geekerella. Just read Geekerella first. They are both really easy quick reads. They are both beautiful and I just think that if you enjoy one of them you're gonna enjoy the other one as well. So yeah these were all of my thoughts on The Princess and the Fango. I want to know any of your thoughts. Are you excited? Have you already read it? Then I want to know what you thought about it. And yeah I make new videos every Wednesday and Sunday with occasional reviews on Friday so click subscribe to never miss anything and hit the little bell so you could notified as well and thank you so so much for watching i guess i'll see you soon bye